Okay, chapter 12, this will be part four because Makeup Essentials is such a large chapter. Again, I'm quickly going to be reading through this section uh, so we can get to chapter 12, which is advanced topics and treatments that will probably have more questions pulled from that for state boards for studying purposes. Um, so again, quickly going through chapter 12. So I'm going to go ahead and read the boxes on there. Focus on retailing. Lip colors create a good opportunity for retail sales. Suggest, suggest a few colors and finishes to your clients. Lip color is a simple way to change a look. It is easy way for your client to complete their look and brighten their day. Did you know lip liner used as a base for lipstick and applied all over the lip helps color last much longer than lipstick alone. It also helps color look more natural as it fades without leaving an obvious line around the lips. And also, did you know using your wedge style sponge, you can add a little loose powder around the outside of the lip to help prevent the color from bleeding. Dust the excess powder away from away with the other side of the sponge. Okay. So 589 makeup application tips and guidelines. The following guidelines should be considered when applying makeup. Your fingernails should be short with smooth edges. Be especially cautious when working around the client's eyes. Although single use tools may not be the most, the most artist's first choice, they are a clean, safe, inexpensive way to get a job done. Disposable brushes and applicators should be used to prevent the spread of infection and offer a clean application every time. Blending and evenness are the most important factors in a good makeup application. <clears throat> Apply creams or liquids before powders. Cream over powders do not blend. Use a light touch. Avoid tugging on the skin or rubbing too hard and avoid holding the client's head. Be cautious when lifting the skin around the eyes. Lifting the skin may change the look when you, go, uh, when you let go of the skin around the eye. It is helpful to have your client open and close their eyes during the application so you can see the results of the work and make any necessary adjustments as you go. Be sure the client's eyes are closed when applying powder or eyeshadow. Apply foundation and powder downward in the direction of the hairs on the face for better blending. Incorporate bracing techniques to allow a safe makeup application and it refers to the two figures on these pages which shows makeup applications uh, being handled and how they are bracing the client and applying the makeup. When applying makeup to your client's eyes and lips, be sure to brace the back of your hand or fingers gently around the client's face to steady your hand during application. A tissue can be used between your bracing hand and your client's skin to avoid smudging the underlying makeup. When performing a lip application, you may prefer two hands to brace, <clears throat> excuse me, Take your non-dominant hand and place it on the edge of the chin. This offers soft support for your dominant working hand. You can also brace your cor the corner of the mouth and apply from corner to center. For the eye, brace your hand just above the brow, not at the top of the head. <clears throat> Page 591, use highlighting and contouring techniques for balance and proportion. Highlighting and con contouring use light and dark shades of makeup to draw attention to or away from a particular facial feature. A basic rule to keep in mind for highlighting and contouring is that highlighting a feature emphasizes and contouring minima uh, minimizes. A highlight is created when the cosmetic uses a when they a highlight is created when the cosmetic used is lighter than the original foundation applied. Conversely, a contour or shading is formed when the product used is darker than the skin or foundation color. The use of shading using dark colors or shades minimize prominent features, making them appear less noticeable. Using highlighting and contouring, you can satisfy your client's desire for a more balanced appearance by enhancing or de-emphasizing facial features or shapes. Understand facial shapes to make it easier to balance features your client wish to emphasize or de-emphasize. Products used for highlighting and contouring are foundations and powders. Experiment using lighter and darker shades to achieve the desired effect. Jawline and neck area. When using highlighting and contouring on the jawline and neck, the goal is to be able to blend the product so it is consistent from face to neck. From the same tonal family as your base foundation, select a color or shade lighter or high for highlighting and a shade darker for contouring. 
Be sure to use a translucent powder to help the makeup set and avoid transfer to clothing. If you wish to elongate the neck, use a lighter color all the way down the center and use a darker shade under the jaw and down both sides. I would say that is often a mistake I see where the face doesn't match the neck and decollete. So you definitely want to make sure you're color matching that. Uh, on pages 592, 593, and 594, it shows face shapes and the areas that you should be applying highlighter and contour to make a more balanced facial structure. So I advise you to go back and look at all of that. I am not going to read through how to do that. The imagery really helps uh, with understanding. So go back and look at those pages. For a small face and short neck, thick neck use a slightly darker foundation on the side of the neck than the one used on the face. This will make the neck appear thinner. Okay, and then on page 594, it goes into eye shapes, and it says, the eyes are very important when it comes to balancing facial features. Proper application of eye colors and shadows can create the illusion of the eyes being larger or smaller and will enhance the overall look. I can't imagine anyone wanting their eyes to look smaller, uh, but on page 595 and 596, and then it goes on to 597, I guess, with eyebrows, but 595 and 596, go back and look at the eye shapes, the reshaping techniques and things that you might want to do with makeup to enhance the eyes and make them look as good as possible. Again, I am not going to read through all the reshaping techniques on all of those, but go back and look at that. It gives lots of good tips. Um, but I'm gonna move on to page 597 and read about eyebrows. Reshaping and defining eyebrows can be an art unto itself. Well-groomed eyebrows are part of the complete makeup application. The eyebrows, the frame for the eye. Over-tweezed eyebrows may not grow back and can make the client appear older. Use caution when removing brow hairs by either tweezing or waxing. Subtle changes in the shape of the brows can make a big difference in the client's overall look. Adjustments to eyebrow shape can also be used to enhance other facial features. <clears throat> absolutely true once that hair is gone it may or may not grow back that's why people that over tweezed in the 90s are really struggling to get the full brow look now um, so be very mindful when you're dealing with eyebrows the shape that you're trying to uh, achieve and it goes into page 597 and 598 is all about eyebrow structure and what you're trying to create and how to do that. On 598, it says, when a client wants to correct their eyebrow shape, begin by removing all unnecessary hairs and then demonstrate how to use the eyebrow pencil or shadow to fill in until the natural hairs have grown again. When there are spaces in the eyebrow hair, they can be filled in with hair-like strokes of an eyebrow pencil or shadow applied with an angle brush. Use an eyebrow brush or makeup sponge to soften the pencil or shadow marks. Okay, so yes, talk with a client extensively when you are talking about what you're doing with your their brows and especially if you're removing any hair because it's easier to go slowly to accomplish a look than to aggressively do what you think is right and then the client isn't happy. <clears throat> Page 599 is the ideal brow shape. The ideal brow shape can be measured by using three lines and the diagrams figure 12-34 show the ideal eyebrow shape and how to achieve that. There are different lines depending on the nasal structure of the person and where those lines should go from. So the first line is vertical, measured from the widest point of the nose and inner corner of the eye upward. This is where the eyebrow should begin. For wider nostrils, rest the applicator just above the nostril for a more accurate start point. The second line is from the outer corner of the nose to the outer corner of the eye. This is where the eyebrow should end. The third line is vertical from the outer circle of the iris, the colored part of the eye, upward to the highest point of the brow arch. The client should be looking straight ahead as you determine this line. The third line is where the highest part of the brow arch should ideally be. And figure 12-34 shows that. And if you'll remember, 
Um, this is the same diagram that was used when we were talking waxing and your waxing points. Of course, not everyone's eyebrows fit exactly within these measurements, so use them only as guidelines. Use the thin edge of the tool, such as a small ruler, brow brush, or pencil to measure these lines out. If desired, use a brow pencil to draw little dots and mark the three points. This also helps mark the area for hair removal. Lips. Lips are usually proportioned so that the curves or peaks of the upper fall directly under the lines center of each nostril. In some cases, one side of the lip may differ from the other. Various lip colors and techniques can be used to create the illusion of better proportions. As illustrated in table 1211, it is best to follow the natural lip line as closely as possible. 1211 is gonna be on the next page. And check in, what is contouring or shading used for? 15, where on the face could you apply a highlighter? 16, how do you measure the ideal eyebrow shape? Okay, in page 600, we have lip shapes, how to correct them. We've got the lip shape, the reshaping techniques, lots of great pictures. So look back at table 12, 11, to get a better understanding of how to tackle lips with makeup application. And I'm gonna pick back up on reading page 601. Create makeup looks for special occasions. When working with a client for a special occasion, try to get as much information as possible about the event. Identify it, identifying it as an evening or outdoor event may help you create the look that will look great and last longer. If you are working with a client for an evening event, one with lower lighting that is more formal suggests a stronger makeup look, perhaps with false eyelashes. If the event is a daytime or outdoor event, make sure you are working with similar lighting conditions to ensure the client will look great. Events are an opportunity for clients to purchase any makeup they may want to have on hand, like a lipstick color you used, powder, or bronzer. Check with the client and see if they will need a hairstylist or other services. If you are in a salon, this is a perfect opportunity to provide all your clients' needs for the occasion. If providing this service in a spa or other aesthetic treatment location, consider recommending a quality salon in your area. Helping your client with all their needs is something that they will appreciate and helps to build a network of coworkers that will refer services to you. Cross-promoting is beneficial for everyone. Page 602. Bridal makeup. Bridal makeup is an important part of the bride's wedding. Bridal makeup is a highly sought after and can be booked months in advance. A consultation or dry run is recommended to help establish both the desired look and timeless for the day of the event. This will help to ensure things go as smoothly as possible on the actual wedding day. For the consultation, establish the bride's color preferences and type of makeup that she wants. Ask to see a photograph of the dress to determine how formal the event will be. The photo will help in designing the right feel for the makeup. Using a scarf, practice protecting the hair and face while putting on and removing the garment. On the wedding day, many brides like to hold off starting makeup until the last possible moment, so you may have to work on it with work in tandem with a hairstylist to finish on time. It can be helpful to practice this teamwork during the consultation. Discuss the wedding day timeline at this point as well. Advocate for building in extra time to ensure you can stay on track even if there are unforeseen issues. At the consultation, be sure to suggest products the bride may want to purchase for the wedding and reception. And there are a couple of images on here, just a picture of a bride and then a more dramatic glamorous eye look. It says, focus on special services. Weddings and special occasions are great opportunity for client services and retail sales. Brides and those attending special events will want to look their best. Facials, good skin care products, and waxing are an important part of prepping for the big day. Allow plenty of time for your clients to start a beauty maintenance program and make sure products are effective and there are no negative skin reactions. I will say that is utmost important. If someone comes in and says, I want my brows waxed for my wedding next week, that is very scary territory because you don't know how their skin is going to react. So start these care services early uh, so they can look their best and you can't uh, don't run into any allergies or adverse reactions. Special occasion makeup for eyes, striking contour eyes, 
Follow these techniques for more glamorous eyes. I am not gonna read how to do special occasion makeup. I think there are more important things that we can move on to, but if you wanna learn more about special occasion makeup, dramatic smoky eyes, go back and read pages 602 and 603. I'll go ahead and read in the check-in questions. 17, why is it important to get as much information as possible about the event when applying makeup for special events? And 18, what are the important details to consider when planning bridal makeup? Apply makeup for the camera and special events, photography and video application. I'm not gonna read through all of that. Again, I think if you're really, people are either really into becoming a makeup artist or an esthetician, some do both, most definitely. There are some out there that do both. Um, but as far as state boards are considered and the purpose of me reading this book, I'm going to quickly continue on through chapter 12 so we can get to chapter 13. So again, on page 604, if you are um, going back and you really wanna carefully read over, this is photography and video applications and tips and tricks on how to do that and doing high definition makeup. Um, we have a section that talks about airbrush makeup and cases that you would use airbrush makeup, such as photography, film, theater, fantasy, and bridal makeup can occasionally be airbrush makeup. Uh, Check-in on page 605 is question 19. What is high def makeup? How is it different from ordinary makeup? 20, list the benefits of airbrushing. And on page 605 is a section that talks about Recognize the benefits of camouflage makeup, and it has an image of someone that has had their tattoo camouflaged, probably for a big event. And the check-in question is, who can benefit from camouflage makeup? All right, page 606 goes very in depth about the application of artificial eyelashes, the types of lashes that you can use, and there are some full strip examples that are shown, eyelash tabs that have multiple lashes coming off of each tab, and then individual lashes that also can be applied with lash glue through the artificial eyelash application process. There is a section, again, that starting off with the types of lashes we discussed, the adhesives that are used, the contraindications, for people that are not candidates for artificial eyelashes, I will read over the contraindications because these are things that you definitely need to take into consideration before you put artificial eyelashes on anybody. Um, and again, I would probably try to do a, a run through before the big day because you don't know how people are going to have possible reactions to the adhesives and the glues that you're using in these products. Contraindications would include if someone is pregnant, has eye irritations, an eye infection, eye allergies, chronic inflammation of the eyelid, glaucoma, excessive tears, if they're undergoing chemotherapy or recently have undergone chemotherapy, if they have thyroid problems affecting lash growth or hair loss, if they have asthma, they may be sensitive to the scent, uh, smell of the adhesives, so those are all things that you need to consider before even doing false lashes on someone. And I'm gonna read what it says about chemotherapy because I said if they're undergoing it or have recently undergone it, and this is what the book says. Chemotherapy often causes shedding of the lashes which act as a protective barrier to prevent dust and debris from entering the eye. Without them, your client will already ha be having trouble with eye irritation and tearing. The fumes from the glue used to attach artificial lashes to the eyelid can worsen this irritation and watering of the eyes. Instead, show the client how to use eyeliner to create the illusion of a lash line while being careful not to allow eyeliner inside the eyelid. A colorful lipstick can help draw attention from the thinning eyelashes. The recycled growth for eyelashes approximately 56 days. Okay, and I'm gonna read the box that says, did you know glaucoma is a disease in which the optic nerve is damaged and can lead to a progressive irreversible loss of vision? And uh, I will read uh, 
the next section is removing artificial eyelashes. You need to know how to carefully remove those artificial eyelashes and check in 22. Name and describe the two types of artificial eyelashes. I am gonna read the caution section before moving on. Caution, not all tents are safe or legal to use, so be sure to check with local laws and regulations to determine which are allowed in your area. Use of illegal tents could result in fines and loss of your license. Do not use tents with aniline derivatives, which are coal tar based. These are not FDA approved and can cause blindness. Yikes. Some tents on the market may be sold by retailers but are actually illegal in the United States. So just because you can buy it online doesn't mean you can legally use it in your state on a client. Keep that in mind for all products. Vegetable dyes may be allowed in some regions but do not work as well as or last as long. Some region, regions prohibit the use of any type of coloring product to tint the eyelash or eyebrows. Permanent hair color should never be used on brows. Okay, so moving on on uh, page 608, it says describe tinting lashes and brows on a makeup client. Okay, so we already talked about how to do false lashes and artificial lashes on clients. We briefly went over that. Another option is lash tinting um, and lash extensions and lash perming or what we call lash lifting. Those are all very popular services right now. If that is something that you are really interested in, I recommend uh, you go back and read through that section. I don't recall any of that being on state boards. Um, so I am not going to go through and read all of that. But again, pages 608 and 609 describe tinting lashes and brows on a makeup client. It discusses lash extensions and lash perming or what we call lash lifting. Check in 23. What ingredients found in lash tint products should not be used? I just read that. And 24, how long do lash extensions last and how best can they be applied so they will last as long as possible? All right, continuing on page 609, we have explained the benefits of permanent makeup application. Permanent makeup application has obviously become much more popular in I'd say the last 10 years or so. Um, so go through and read about permanent makeup application what to expect, how long it lasts, the different types of machines, and different considerations for using permanent makeup. And um, the check-in is define permanent cosmetic makeup. So what does that mean? And page 611, describe the benefits of a career in makeup. So obviously I'm breezing through this chapter, but makeup is still a very, very popular industry. Um, and there are lots of options from special events to you know teaching people how to use makeup and permanent makeup. Some of the different things that you can do as described in this section would be commercial photographers often work with freelance makeup artists. So you could be a freelance makeup artist. Um, you can do makeup for television, theater, movies, or fashion shows, which is a very competitive field to get into. Uh, another option would be mortuary science, which is something that you might not consider, but obviously is pretty important and an option for makeup artists. So it talks more on 612 about freelance makeup artistry and uh, different types of work that you can do, and it gives some examples of before and afters on um, men and what the setup might look like of where you might be working. Uh, you could be a marketing freelance makeup service. You can do makeup marketing tips. So um, you could, makeup marketing tips would be promote makeup services to facial clients, offer free consultations, Visit and hand out your business cards and brochures to photographers, bridal shops, studio, TV studios, and ad agencies. Those are all places where people might need professional makeup application. Establish a, re a relationship with physicians' offices, such as dermatology or cosmetic surgery. Create a quality portfolio to share with potential clients. 
Attend bridal fairs and place ads in bridal publications. Those are very popular events that you can get into. Market yourself at event locations and venues where large functions are held. And think of other retail stores and locations where you could offer free consultations. Take advantage of all social network, media, and internet marketing avenues. So creating your on-location makeup kit, uh, it goes through how to set that up and what it should look like, all the tools that you might need. All right, and check in, what is a test shoot? That's question 26 and 27. Why is marketing yourself as a makeup artist important and how can you go about it? Uh, page 614 and 615 talks about promote retail services as a makeup artist. And it shows an image of what your retail section might look like in your studio. And it says check in list factors to keep in mind when promoting retail services. All right, and on 616 and moving on through the rest of chapter 12, I'm gonna tell you what they talk about, uh, but I'm not gonna read it. It's very important, especially in this section. It's very visual. It takes you through step-by-step -step of each procedure. So procedure 12-1, perform a professional makeup application. And it starts on 616 and it goes all the way to Six twenty-four. So that is a lot of steps. Steps one through thirty-three. It takes you very carefully through all those steps. It shows you the implements and materials that you're going to need, how to prepare, and what the procedure is. So go through and look through all those images, read through all those steps. The next procedure that they're going to take you through step by step is going to be applying artificial lashes. So applying artificial lashes, again, it goes through all the implements and materials, the preparation, the step-by-step -step process, and that is completed on page 629. Procedure 12.3 is tinting lashes and brows, and this starts on 6.30 and moves on to... 635. So with tinting lashes and brows, I would say that is something that most need additional training on because um, from what I've seen on different groups that I'm in for estheticians, uh, this is an area that sometimes isn't covered very thoroughly. And when you're dealing with anything around the eye, you need to use all precautions do everything step-by-step, step. follow all the um, instructions on the products that you're using to a T because if you go outside of what those guidelines are and what those um, instructions are, then you are not legally covered because you have not followed the instructions by the manufacturer, so you have to do that. So. Go through and follow along with the step-by-step -step procedures on how to do that safely for your client. And that is it for chapter 12. I know I really breezed through this last section. Uh, so go back and read through it carefully. And I know a lot of you are really eager to jump into chapter 13, so I'm ready to get there too. Advanced topic and treatments is next. Tell all your classmates to follow. Once I get a thousand followers, I will do study guides to go along with each chapter, which will help you with state boards. Thanks.